So this video is largely a opinion piece and it is based on observation and comparison. And I would like you to give me your feedback about what you think about my interpretation from the observations that I'm making. So here goes. Now here's one secret to weight loss in particular. For many years fat has been crucified as being bad. But there's essentially two ways of eating food. Well, three ways. If you look at some athletes, uh, I know from some people who uh, who are like, I don't want to call them bodybuilders, but you know, they're, they're lifting weights heavily and stuff, right? They're eating a high protein, high carbohydrate diet, very low fat, high protein, high carbohydrate, maybe 50-50. And then there is the carnivore approach, which is high protein, high fat, no carbohydrates. And then is your standard diet in the way, where you have moderate protein, moderate carbohydrates and moderate fat. If you want to lose weight, you have to go to one of those two fringes. Either you stay away from fat or you stay away from carbohydrates. That is the approach if you want to gain muscles and, and bulk as well, right? It's, but you always have high protein. Now, the problem that most people have though is a lack of discipline. See, for people who work out hard and they want to you know, lift weights and they want to gain bulk, they are used to a tough exercise regimen. They have a lot of discipline. So for them, if they want to eat, they eat before they work out, right? And they usually don't cheat on their food. They don't eat another bowl of pasta or something before bed. The average person does not have this type of discipline. Not only do we not work out like this, but we're also eating the carbohydrate throughout the day, including snacks. And because of that, our blood sugar goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, all day long. And what we consider being hungry is actually low blood sugar levels. Because every time you eat carbohydrates, you produce insulin, which then uh, uh, burns off these carbohydrates, right? And when, when your body is done with it, you have high insulin levels, but no carbohydrates to burn. That's when you feel like you're crashing. That's when you feel like you're hungry. You're not hungry. Your blood sugar is getting low because you have too much insulin, which was needed to fight off the carbohydrates. So if you lack good discipline, then carbohydrates are your enemy. And the majority of people don't have good discipline. Now, some people are naturally blessed with a very fast metabolism. They can eat all kinds of sugar carbs and they don't seem to be gaining any weight while other people don't have that liberty. And that is part of uh, where the discipline comes in. Someone who does not gain weight quickly can afford to not be that disciplined. But someone who does gain weight quickly, especially in the absence of exercise, they have to be more disciplined. Now, the carnivore diet, which is on the other side of that spectrum, high protein, high fat, no carbohydrates, 
eliminates the discipline factor. Because in the absence of carbohydrates, your blood sugars don't spike. And you only eat when you're actually hungry. And chances are, you also only eat as much until you're full. Overeating is a whole lot harder. Right? Like, if I, if this was a regular meal, let's say this was a spaghetti meal with whatever, right? Instead of my 12 eggs. It would only take half an hour to an hour after I'm done eating it before I feel like having an appetite again. And that's when dessert comes in, right? All of a sudden I'm having a piece of pie, right? More sugar, right? With carnivore, these 12 eggs that I just ate, I'm probably going to be feeling full and it's three in the afternoon now. I'm probably still going to be feeling full at eight o'clock tonight. And I don't consider food for the rest of the day. So I'll be good. If I do feel an appetite, I've got my hard boiled eggs over here, right? Peel them one at a time, put some salt on it, eat it, uh, eat it slowly. Maybe I'll eat only one. Maybe I'll eat two. Maybe I'll eat all six. But I have them. And then no, there's no, no carbohydrates in there. It's a much, eat, much easier eating regimen. With a whole lot less temptation of cheating, of being desirous of other things. Which brings us kind of back to the, the combination diet where you eat carbs, fat and protein. And that is the absolute worst. So when you think about a, a weightlifter being able to gain muscle and strength by protein and fat or by protein and carbs, right? But if you have a combination of protein, carbs, and fat, all of a sudden you're having the perfect recipe for weight gain. You would have to work out a whole lot harder while having the chance of falling victim to temptation. And because most people don't have this discipline, temptation is definitely gonna be there. So whenever you have a combination of fat and carbohydrates, you're introducing weight gain. Because if you have both, your body will try to use the fat first. That's why the carbohydrates will be converted into sugar. Imagine you are a bear in the woods. Now you don't have to choose between man and bear. Imagine you are a bear in the woods and it's fall. You had a great summer, everything peachy, but you know winter's coming. You know as a bear, you need to fatten up because you need to get your winter speck, right? You need to, you need to gain weight so you can go into hibernation for the entire winter. How are you going to gain that weight? Well, what are the bears eating? In the fall, there's all kinds of uh, berries ripe, let's say blueberries and other things. And they are gouging on patches of whatever fruits they can find. A high carbohydrate diet. And you know what else is available in the fall? All of the nuts, the seeds that come from the trees, chestnuts, acorns. They're going to be gouging on those things as well. High protein, high fat, right? protein and fat. 
the combination of carbohydrates and fat and protein leads to weight gain. That is literally what a beer does in the fall. And then in the springtime, when it's time, you know, when they come out of hibernation, there's nothing growing. There's no fruits, there's no nuts. It's all taken care of. So what are they gonna eat? That's when they go hunting. Now they're going for fat and protein. So they can regain their strengths. So these wild animals, they are actually actively going through these cycles on purpose. High fat, high carbohydrate in the fall, so they can fatten up for the winter. And then high fat, high protein in the spring. In the, in the springtime, so they can regain their strengths after a long winter. And in the summertime, they probably have a combination of things. So they, they prob so bears probably fit into all three categories of eating. And they do it naturally. And technically, even for us as humans, we used to be part of these cycles because there was only so much food we could store. Nowadays we have, you know, supermarkets. We can have everything anytime. And that leads to additional temptation. That leads to uh, eating patterns that are not natural. And in the absence of discipline will lead to weight gain. So if you're struggling with weight, you've got to consider what your options here really are. Your options are become a weightlifter. <laughs> or become more disciplined with your diet. And I think for most people, being more disciplined with their diet is probably a better option. That's why the carnivore diet is a perfect diet to do both, lose weight and gain muscle. As a matter of fact, you might, even without exercising, just by being moderately active, moderately active, you might actually still become stronger just by being on carnivore because it's a muscle booster and the fat component is going to give you everything else now here's another fun fact about fat people always talk about fiber and uh, as a carnivore very clearly you don't eat fiber and people will tell you, no, you need fiber for your digestion. It's like, no, you don't. It's, you, you know, we, we have to evaluate information that we already have access to that has been around for a long time. So there was a story about people, hunters, kind of, or people who live in the wilderness, really, who during the winter time only eat wild meat and the biggest problem that they usually had was massive constipation and that's why people tell you oh you've got to eat fiber for your digestion that's not true though the problem for them was that wild meat is lean it's super lean meat what they needed was fat in their diet because the fat regulates your digestion. So if you go on the carnivore diet, you can actually experiment with it. It's easiest if you take two weeks, three weeks, whole months of just eating the same thing every day. But what you keep changing for your experiment is one week you have extremely high amount of fat in your diet which is when you will most likely have more loose digestion one week you're gonna be having very little fat in your diet which is when you probably have 
a little bit of constipation. And then when you're in the middle somewhere, you will find that your digestion is just perfect. So fat is a wonderful tool to control your digestion. You don't need fiber for that. Fiber is overrated. You gotta remember, fiber comes from plants that we probably shouldn't be eating in the first place. So there's that. See, the problem stems from a time when we discovered alternative ways to deal with something. Like scurvy. Right? Sailors of old on long voyages would often get scurvy. Until eventually someone discovered that if you eat citrus fruit, aka vitamin C, that you can prevent scurvy. So having citrus fruit, either uh, uh, oranges or lemons or apples on board the ship, you could prevent the scurvy. But how come people on land did not actually get scurvy? Did they eat those fruits regularly in order to prevent scurvy? No, they didn't. As a matter of fact, most apples weren't even edible, good edible apples anyway. And they weren't sweet, they were sour apples. You, you know, many things that we eat today with apples are back sweetened, right? But they didn't have the sweetness. They didn't use honey back then. Not the way we do. So they may have had access to vitamin C in the form of fruits, but they did not actually consume fruits in enough quantity to prevent scurvy. So then what's the real cause of getting scurvy? But the secret here lies in the other foods that we have been eating. When you're on land, you eat fresh meat. When you're on a ship, you eat, well, you also eat meat, but the meat is usually uh, either dried or salted. It's losing its, its capacity to prevent scurvy. That is where the real problem comes from. If you're eating just fresh meat, you won't have a problem. Now, I've been a carnivore for how long now? Two years? A little over two years? Almost three years, maybe? I don't eat fruits, so I don't eat vitamin C. I don't take vitamin C supplements. I don't have scurvy. So just because we discovered that citrus fruit can fight off scurvy does not mean that citrus fruit should be our base diet. Right? We have found an alternative way to deal with one thing. And this has turned into this, I don't know, race and competition to find alternatives to symptoms, to treat symptoms, instead of addressing the causes, right? It's a main problem of Western medicine. Western medicine treats symptoms, while Eastern medicine is based in prevention. Right? And, and we do this every day. Every problem that we see, we are trying to treat the symptom. Oh, this person is poor, the government needs to do more for them. No, it's, you gotta figure out why that person is poor in the first place. It's not because the system is not fair. It's not because someone is trying to disadvantage someone. It's usually a cascade of decisions that have been made 
many times over a long long time period over many many years and that eventually leads to whatever you see as oh this is bad we have to do something about that it really is in the same category of the lack of discipline Three hundred years ago, when everybody was a farmer, you didn't question what you were doing. You were doing it, and you survived. Now we have five hundred different options of what we could be doing, and we want to get the maximum out, and we want to put the minimum in, and then it turns into let's just put the minimum in. Let's just do what makes me feel good, and. And then we don't reap the rewards that we wanted to reap at some point and then we say well society hates us when in reality it's the lack of discipline and doing the right thing over a long period of time when I was driving this Uber I was able to observe this and find out with countless conversations from my passengers <clears throat> what their situation is, what their background is, and what their interpretation is. And no one ever has said, I made a mistake. No one ever said, I did the wrong thing. Every single one blamed the environment and anytime I try to compare this to any situation I've ever been in, I can say 100% that nothing has ever been the system for myself. It has always been my actions or the lack thereof. And if that is true for me 100% of the time, how come the exact opposite is true for everyone else and it turns out people don't like accountability no one likes to say or be told you fucked up it's your fault you made mistakes no one wants to admit making mistakes we are all wonderful but the reality is we do make mistakes and the only thing that we do with our mistakes is we identify how those mistakes express themselves, the symptoms. And then we say, society needs to do something about these symptoms. Such a misleading thing. It's if you don't learn from your mistakes, how will you ever learn? You don't. That's what people do. People don't learn from their mistakes. It's a lack of discipline. One of the few places where we understand discipline and making mistakes and learning from our mistakes based on evaluation of the symptoms and the actions is sports. In sports, we always tell people how they make mistakes. Oh, this, why did he lose the ball? Oh, he's not fast enough. He's not this, he's not that. All day long, we criticize their actions, which leads to losing points. There, there's, never, there's never a question of that when you lose something, that you did everything right. Maybe you didn't pass the ball, maybe you didn't run fast enough, maybe you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Right? In sports, we are very critical. And, and we also see people with extreme discipline. You don't see fat athletes. <laughs> oh, in the retire, maybe they become fat. Some of them maybe, but generally no. And if those very same people want to do something else afterwards, they can use their ability of discipline to become very successful. 
Now, not everyone who has good discipline is uh, going to become an athlete. It might be a lack of interest in that field. But generally speaking, the people with the most discipline will be the most successful. Because lack of discipline means inconsistencies. And the more inconsistent you are, the less successful you will be. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in that space. So let me know down in the comments, what are you thinking about my observations and my opinion on who is better, bear or man, who's managing their diet? <laughs> uh, and since you have been sticking around for this long, uh, you might just as well subscribe, give it a like and share the video. Uh, this way, you know, more people get to enjoy it. <laughs> I'll see you all in the next video.